Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I probably think that you heard a lot about blockchain, ICOs, uh, Bitcoins, Ethereum, and all this stuff. I tell you, the first time I heard of a blockchain was in 2014. A team of IT nerds knocked at my door in my law firm, at my law firm in Zug, and it was Vitalik Buterin. And you know, these guys, they don't look in your eyes because they always think how they program and they are paling. And then they ask me, Luca, now we would like to launch a blockchain version 2.0, which allows smart contract systems, and we would like to launch this blockchain with a Genesis release of our blockchain-based token, which at the beginning will only be a digital representation, but after the deployment of the Genesis block will then be used as a native token to the blockchain. Shit, I said. <laughs> what the hell is this? I mean, I heard about the Google and stuff like things, <laughs> but this is, you know, the only thing I really understand was Genesis, you know, Genesis. So, actually, <laughs> it was an enlightenment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And I tell you, it took me one year to understand what's really happening, what the absolute disruptive character of the blockchain technology is. You know. So 2014, they came, knocked at our door and said, listen, we want to build a tokenized ecosystem, and you have to help to find us a structure which is suitable to do that. So we, we actually, we, we were thinking, uh, we were asking the US American lawyers, you know, guys, you know, we are issuing a token on the blockchain. Blockchain is something which is, looks like Bitcoin, but it's not Bitcoin. And the first thing we heard was, oh shit, this is very dangerous. You know, all the drug dealers and everybody's paying with Bitcoin and uh, it might be something which is a security in the US. So our problem was at the beginning, you know, nobody knew what it is. Now, three years ago, same situation, there are a lot of speculation what it could be, but what I would like to show you now is a little handbook, or let's say a little roadmap, or a little cookbook on what is needed to be resolved that we will have a real flourished tokenized ecosystem. Now, if you, just when I started, we heard that when I started to talk, just to think about blockchain, we had a, a market capitalization of one to two billion. As per today, we have 335 billion market capitalization of all the blockchain currencies. We have about 1,300 blockchain currencies. 24 billion turnover, uh, 24 hours turnover. It's amazing what's going on. So a lot of people say, hey, this is a bubble. But I don't believe that. I think this blockchain and the the technology around this has a really a, a, disruptive, a disruptive consequence for us, all of us. And I always say, you know, and as, as, uh, as, as I said to my son, you know, he just finished now uh, his uh, gymnasium and is now traveling around the world, hanging around a little bit. So, listen, guy, you need to learn this, you know, this is the future. There are so many tax, legal, uh, constitutional aspects which are for students incredibly interesting to develop now, because now you can develop law. For us, now working in this space and advising all these startups and all these uh, blockchain-based applications, what we see is three challenges to create a decentralized ecosystem. We need to have a legal base. We need to know exactly what do we have. What is a token? Can you eat it? Can you drink it? Can you smell it? What is it really? It is a security, is it a commodity, is it a currency? What is a token? And then we have to understand that although these nerds, you know, and all these decentralized guys, they, and all these pirates, you know, they like to say, guys, fuck the governments. We want to have a fully decentralized system. We don't trust anymore the banks and all this establishment, we want to be fully decentralized. Let the world be decentralized. 
And then we old guys, we, need, we are then a little bit realistic and say, guys, be realistic. There needs to be a certain part of centralization still. Now, and the last point, which is very interesting, or let's, let's, which is challenging for us at the moment, is on the one hand, you have the blockchain and token and token ecosystems, but you need to integrate these systems into real applications. You need to integrate these applications in real banking, otherwise it does not work. So, these are the three challenges we will go through quickly through them. Now, the legal concept. The, I would say, the most amazing enlightening after the one I had just now was when I was studying the functionality of the blockchain, of a blockchain information. And I tell you, I like the term Bitcoin because what the technology allows you is to shape a bit. So you have a programmed information which has all the qualities of a coin. That's why I think the, t the term Bitcoin is, is really very accurate. Now, if you see what you can create, you can create with a token, you can create something which is unique, definable, not changeable. You can create exclusive access to this token, to this information. You can transfer it and you can enforce it. Now, I went back, studied and, and was thinking, what could that be? I've heard that, all these elements. Now, the one uh, among you should go back to the legal textbook, open it and study the definition of civil property. All these elements, these are all the elements of eigentum, of property. So one of the really disruptive elements what we have here, and I will come to this point later on, is you can create real property. And now taking also a constitutional view. Now, in legal history, property was a defense rights against the church and governments. Because only if you can claim, this is mine, you can have a defense right against authorities, governments. Now, that was a fundamental change in concept of the old royal feudalistic system into a more democratic private system. And what you see after this change, the development of economy, it's all based on the principle of protection of property. Now, property being one of the most relevant commercial defense rights against government. And now this is something which you can create with a blockchain. And this is disruptive. You can create something which you only you can access to it. And this is the ultimate, the ultimate, the ultimate way how you can be, let's say, liberal. I'll give you a, a, a concrete example. Since we are in this blockchain space, now we also represent these young multi-millionaires. You know, they bought Bitcoin with a price of two, of seven dollars, uh, and Ethereum uh, uh, below one dollar. They, they, some of them, they really have two-digit millionaires already. Now, one of these guys is now in the middle of a divorce, and he told me, Luca, I will never ever hand over my crypto assets to my wife. And I told him, listen, guy, I mean, this, you have to. This is, this, this is civil law in Switzerland, you know? You need to actually separate all your estate. Your wife gets half of it. And he told me, no, I will not give her half of it. And then I said, you know, I mean, this is law. You, you, you will get, there will be a judgment. The judgment will be rendered, and you will actually be then enforced to hand her out half of your crypto assets. And now if you talk about exclusive assets, access only, 
the person who has the private key, has the key to the assets, can actually dispose over the assets. So in order to, let's say, to split the crypto assets he has, you know, he had to release or disclose his private key, his code, to the, act, to the assets. Now, the only way to give his, uh, to actually, to hand out this key would be put the gun on his head and say, guy, now, speak out, come on, tell me your password. So now, if, if, if you do not have any possibility to get a password or the pub private key to access this digital representation of a property, there is no way you can get it. So this is the ultimate, the ultimate property right. So if you think, for example, your money on your bank is yours, forget it. It's contaminated by balance sheets as well as currency risks. But with the blockchain, with the access directly to a digital property, you have the ultimate property you can hold. And this is the disruptive element. Now, this concept, what we call the concept of blockchain crypto property, has not, born, it has not been born yet. Legal writers think how we can create now a new type of property. And for us, as consumers, it is very important that, as soon, that we have very soon a concept which we can rely on. And I think it's a normal evolution of defining property. First, we had physical property. Then we had property represented by a paper, ein Wertpapier. Now it's absolutely clear that we should have a new term, which is the new kind of blockchain crypto property. Now, <coughs> this will be digging into the ZGB, into the civil law, and that means, whoa, a lot of heads of parliament smoking, parliament smoking heads before we are there. Now, coming a little bit in the ICO sphere, if you have, this, if you have a, a team which is actually say, okay, guys, we want to make a token generating event or an ICO, we want to develop a tokenized, decentralized ecosystem, as I said, I always have to tell these guys, be a little bit realistic. There will always be centralization in whatever decentralized project you have in the world. So, one is that if you start, let's say, I'm a team, I'm a core team, and I say I want to create an application platform which is like a new Spotify, the Spotify, decentralized Spotify. I will connect artists with consumers. We create this. I have an idea. My new platform is, costs me one million. I will have a platform uh, programmed on an Ethereum platform, on the Ethereum network, and I will issue tokens. Now, we as contributors, we want to know exactly where do we contribute in. And now, if you see a lot of these token generating events which happens today, they have some wallets somewhere in the world. Nobody knows exactly who has access to these wallets. So, there will always be a centralization in somebody receiving funds, needs to be controlled. Another element is, and this is now very um, a bit technic technical, if you start to be a member or let's say participate in an ecosystem, there will be a first Genesis ledger, which is the starting point of a new application. So you, when you participate in such an ICO, you want to be absolutely sure that if I pay something, I want to have my registration in a Genesis ledger. So again, centralization. And I was in, I had a, we are now working for a government, and this government is setting up a new agency for decentralized ledger technology. This is one of the issues we will deal with because it goes into, or it touches con uh, not financial market regulations, it's more an issue of consumer protection. Now, a, s a third issue is 
Um, or let's say the last one, which is more important, the other one I leave out because it's really a bit too complicated or it's too technical for 18 minutes. Now, the last one is governance. We had one project, a very interesting project. It's a fully decentralized Facebook. A Facebook which allows you that if you actually have a picture there, or if you do download something, people can add advertising and you participate within this ecosystem of all advertising revenue which is on your side, on your page, on your page of this uh, decentralized Facebook application. And these developers, they were really, get, they were really freaking out, saying, wow, this is the revolution. And then we were thinking, and then said, we actually, they said, we will do it fully decentralized. We will deploy it to the blockchain and let it operate it fully decentralized. And then I asked these guys, what are you doing if you have child pornography on, on, on your decentralized network? Oh, shit, we haven't thought of it. Or terrorist financing. So you, you, you can have whatever decentralized application you want, but you need to be aware that you need to have some central governance. Now the last one, which is actually a very, very, the one which causes me at the moment the most of my headache and sleepless nights, you know. It's, and it, 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 it actually, it, it, it has been reached to a stage that my wife recently asked me, Luca, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> uh, and I said, no, no, I have some blockchain challenges, which... <laughs> <laughs> You don't even, if you, if you have always these things to, to study, you know, you forget about thinking about sex. It really is so <laughs> great. Uh, yeah, it's really, it's, it's headache, you know. Especially the last one, you know, the banks, they're creating, they, they're causing me a lot of headaches lately. And I'm close to create my own bank, you know, because it's, it's, if you do not have an integration of this technology into the old world, it doesn't work. It really simply doesn't work. So also for the with, with regarding to, let's say, the topic which I addressed regarding the other government, they said, we want to be the blockchain space of the future. And I told them, do you have an exchange which allows to exchange Bitcoin, Ethereum into old fiat? Fiat means uh, Swiss francs or whatever, US dollars, uh, euro. And they said, no, we don't have. We even have banks, and the majority of our banks, they don't accept any bank transfers, tra trans the bank transfers which, come, which, comes fr which come from an exchange. So there's no way how you can integrate your blockchain into the old world. And this is one of the real, real challenge which we have at the moment. Same happens in Switzerland. If you have a blockchain startup in Switzerland, you will not find the Swiss bank opening a bank account for you. They fear, I don't know what they fear, I mean, I know what they fear. Um, they, they fear a little bit, apart from this general disruptive element that the technology can have, it's always anti-money laundering and terrorism finance, which is, okay, now we can't do that. But here, it needs to have a, there need, we need to have a shift in, in, in the whole overall policy. We need to have, let's say, old industry which are open to this new technology. And here is our homework to do. And if we want to be a land of tomorrow, or if you want to be really at the forefront of this development, and I think it will be a future development, which it will be future application, which will be interesting for all different aspects, from technology, science, projects, as uh, Hrigl mentioned, you know. There are so many uh, different and interesting applications, but we need to solve some of these issues, which I just summarized it now in my short summary. There's a lot of things to do. It's actually more your generation. I'm already a little bit old. I did a lot of these kind of applications and I earned already some Ether capital gains. So I relaxed a little bit, but you will be the ones, the academics, 
who have to think about how we deal in legal tax and compliance with all these new developments in order to be that, that in order that we can develop a sustainable decentralized tokenized ecosystems thank you very much